How to earn a living as a musician. This video is for anybody who wants to make a living as a musician. So especially watch this if you're going to college for music or if you're just sick of the daily grind and you want to do what you really love. I have been a full-time musician for about six or seven years now. And I'm here to tell you the key to success is this. Multiple revenue streams. In fact, do as many different things as you can to earn money. First, let's discuss a few of the main ways that you can earn money as a musician. Number one is obvious, live performance. You probably already do this in restaurants and bars and whatever, so keep at that. But there's a lot of other ways you can earn money from performing. Try to book at least a handful of higher paying gigs each year. These include country clubs, weddings, private parties, etc. So at your own gigs that you're playing already, you can advertise to the crowd that you play weddings and you play private parties because a lot of those are booked through word of mouth. You can basically charge whatever you want for a wedding or a private party. As a solo musician, playing a wedding for four figures is not uncommon. In fact, it's, it is common. And also to book more gigs, you can try certain websites such as The Bash and Gig Salad. Other ways you can perform include busking, which is playing at, on subways and beaches and stuff, festivals, breweries, schools, pit orchestras, major venues if you're a touring musician, corporate events, theme parks, parades, churches, all these things. Consider them if you haven't already. The second way you can earn money is through teaching lessons. You don't need to have a degree or anything really to teach lessons. If it's kind of uh, musicians hiring musicians, all right? I'm assuming you're good at either an instrument or you can sing. So if you can do it, you can probably teach it. It doesn't have to be your main gig. It's not my main gig, but I do teach lessons a few days a week on the after school hours. And through my experience, the best paying gigs like this are through schools as opposed to independent music schools. The independent music schools are going to usually take a higher percentage. In fact, they'll probably take more than 50% of the income from lessons, whereas schools will give you 80 or 90% or more. And lessons are a good way to earn consistent money. You'll get paid weekly or bi-weekly or something, which is different than a lot of the other ways we're going to discuss, which are more long term. So consistent payments are good if you're going to be a full time musician. A third way to earn money from being a musician is music licensing. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about this because I have quite a few videos. In fact, I have a playlist you can check out somewhere. I'll put a link in the description as well. Music licensing is basically writing music for TV shows, YouTubers, radio commercials, TV commercials, etc. It's a good way to earn money and it's a long term game. So you're going to earn royalties through this. You're not going to necessarily get paid up front for your work, but you'll get royalties down the line. It's a long term game. It's fun. It's cool to see where your music gets used, but basically to do this, write music that is geared specifically towards licensing. So listen to music in commercials and TV shows and play to your strengths too. You don't want to just record trailer music if you're just a guitar player or something. It'll be a uphill battle. From this, you can earn royalties through your PRO, your performing rights organization. If you're not a member of a performing rights organization already, sign up immediately, especially if you write your own music because you've probably earned royalties that you haven't gotten. So do it now and start earning immediately. Those are the three main ways that I earn money as a musician, but there are a lot of other ways you can earn money. Let's discuss some of those. Before I go any further, I want you guys to consider something. You've probably realized that there are a lot of musicians in your area, or maybe you live in a remote area or something where it's not as popular, but where there are venues where people perform, there are performers. So I would say that in my area, I live in New Hampshire, I have New England, so I'm close to Boston too. I would say about 5% of local musicians write their own music. The rest are playing strictly covers. So if you perform any kind of original music, you already have a leg up on 95% of the competition out there. It's insane to me how many musicians don't even write their own music. I suggest that you write your own music because you can earn money, whether it's through licensing or Spotify, YouTube royalties, whatever. I suggest you write your own music. You don't have to, but what would you have to show at the end of your career if all you did was play covers? Like, 
So yeah, if you write your own music, you'll have opportunities that 95% of other performing musicians don't have. Think about this too. Out of all the local musicians you know, how many of them are active on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram? You can monetize these platforms. You can earn money for doing whatever, really. No matter what kind of content you put out there, you can monetize it. So musicians are one of the top targets for YouTube and TikTok and all that stuff. A lot of people are going to watch your stuff if you're on there. So get on there and eventually you can monetize it. And I mention YouTube specifically because I believe that it's the easiest to monetize, but it's also e possible to monetize TikTok and Instagram. Even if you're just doing shorts, you can gain a lot of followers. If something goes viral, then there you go. All right, let's continue. Here's some more side hustles for musicians. All right, another big one is studio recording or being a session musician. Unless you live in LA or Nashville or something like that, you're probably not going to be a full-time person who does this. But that won't stop most people these days. Everyone has remote recording setups. If you have your own home studio, you can do it online. I do uh, get a handful of studio gigs per year. Usually it's through online things like could be through YouTube. It could be through there's websites that specialize such as air gigs and Fiverr. And it's a matter of just advertising that you are willing and capable to do remote recording sessions. It doesn't have to be remote too. maybe a local musician will want you to come into the studio with them to do whatever, lay down a guitar on their song or backing vocals or drums, whatever you play. I know uh, a buddy of mine, he does a lot of remote recording. That's actually one of his bigger ways that he earns money. He's also a full-time musician. Along the lines of studio recording, it's good to be able to play multiple instruments. Let's say, for example, you're a guitar player. If you know banjo, mandolin, ukulele, etc., these will help you get more gigs because Guitar players are a dime a dozen, right? But how many banjo plays do you know? If you can learn it at a basic enough level that you can play simple GCD song, then you will get more opportunities. Another way, it's a little bit hard to break into, but assuming you have your own home studio, you can try voiceover. Voiceover is needed for all different kinds of projects, commercials, cartoons, and stuff. You probably have a microphone, so why not? Use it in another way. If you have a nice voice, if your diction is good, you can do it. I've done a little bit of it. Not common for me to get a gig like that, but something to think about. Let's say that you do teach lessons, all right? You can write your own materials, so your own music books, or even if you don't teach lessons, you can still write how to play piano, a book, or whatever, drum techniques, drum exercises, whatever. I have a few books of my own. I publish through Amazon, Kindle Direct Publishing, so anybody can do it. You just got to upload a PDF and get a cover designed. And yeah, it'll earn you some uh, money each month if your books sell. And for myself, I'm a guitar player. My highest selling books are actually ukulele because there's probably not as many people doing that. So I found a little bit of a niche for ukulele. I don't earn a ton a month, but it's something. Similarly, you could sell sheet music online. There's a website called Sheet Music Plus. If you've written down an arrangement of jingle bells for harp or something you could sell that music on their website somebody here or there might buy it especially if you wrote a book you can put that same music from that book into a website such as sheet music plus okay another way along the lines of youtube you can uh, post cover videos you could have your own music videos teach lessons how to play this certain song and you might get some actual clients from that i also teach lessons not only in person but virtually the COVID era was big for that. I do prefer in-person lessons still, but yeah, it's a lot more common than it used to be. And if COVID is to be thanked for something, then <laughs> I guess that's one thing. You know, we're, we're just discussing. I'm just, we're brainstorming here. Another thing, if you want to do on YouTube and on Spotify and whatever, you can create backing tracks. A lot of guitar players, they want to practice their soloing, create backing tracks for them to solo to. And if it's long, if it's like 10 minutes, then and it's a YouTube video, then that adds to your viewing hours. On Spotify, it'll increase your royalties. So all good things. What else can you do? You can book other bands. Let's say you reach out to a certain venue and you just want to become the booking person for that venue. They won't all do this, but you might get the occasional venue that's down to do it. And you can get a little bit of a percentage for each show that you book. You might take 10% or whatever. All right, you can fill in for other bands. Doing that takes some effort. Only do this if you can really learn songs quickly. If you're the kind of person who needs like months to 
learn songs, then it's probably not the, the thing for you to do. But it's a nice way to fill in if you have empty dates on the calendar. Look on Craigslist, Facebook, certain groups on there. Musicians Wanted. I've done it before. It's fun. And you can meet some cool new musicians. And maybe you can hire them to fill in when you need to fill in. So win, win, win. Another thing you can do is live sound. You probably have your own PA if you have a band that plays out. You can rent it out to people or you can just do the sound yourselves for other bands. Once again, if it's an open date that you have on the calendar, bring your own system. Also, not every band has their own system. So you might be the go-to sound guy for a certain band. This is actually good experience for your ears and learning how to mix it. If you don't already know, or even if you do know how to mix, it's still... It's fun and it's good experience. You can learn some more about your own equipment. Another thing you can do is just compose and songwrite for other artists. This is also more common these days online. There's people in, down in Nashville that they do songwriting rounds and stuff. But you can write stuff on your own, post it online. If you don't sing, you can hire a vocalist to just lay down the track and shop it around. A lot of songs by major artists. They're not actually written by the artists themselves. A lot of them are written by freelancers like me and you. If you have any kind of connections, also when you're a musician, connections are everything too. I'm sure you've seen, you can play gigs with fellow musicians. Maybe if you're good friends with them and they're looking for somebody to teach at their location, they'll reach out to you, hire you. If you have a nice web of connections, it helps immensely. And one more thing you can do is record other musicians, all right? So I have uh, an isolation cabinet for my guitar amps. I have a, a vocal booth. I, I don't do it too often, but some of my students, if they want to record something, I'll uh, actually have them come over and record because we can crank the amp in my ISO box and it won't annoy the neighbors. And I have the microphones and whatever we need. So you probably have whatever microphones and software you need. Record other people in your spare time. And this can be something you could do during the week, during the mornings or whatever. So fun to do. So a typical week for me looks like this. During the week, Weekday mornings and early afternoons, I write music and do music licensing stuff, YouTube videos, and so on. In the afternoons, I teach lessons on most days. And then on the evenings and weekends, I play shows. So I do have nights off. You know, I don't play every single night. But there are those who do almost every night. Kudos to them. So I'm sure I've uh, given you guys some ideas that you hadn't thought about. I hope I have at least. Being a full-time musician requires a lot of drive and hustle. You have to make the leap at one point or another. I used to work a full-time job that had nothing to do with music, but I did teach lessons still, and I played in a band at the time. I play in multiple now. At one point, I got a second teaching job, so I was teaching four days a week, which was enough for me plus the gigs to quit my day job. And now with the licensing and everything, I make more than ever through everything that I do. So it's fun, it's rewarding, you have to have the drive. If you're the kind of person who needs like a steady paycheck and benefits and health insurance through your work, then this is not for you. But if you want to be sky is the limit, if you want to do what you love, then this might be the job for you, especially if you can't even picture yourself doing anything else. All right, so I hope this has helped you guys. Please hit subscribe if you haven't, and we will see you in the next video.